guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dark Venture. Dark Venture is by Robert Lemon. It's for one to four players, takes about 60 to 90 minutes, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Dark Venture, you're going to be playing this RPG slash choose your own adventure style game, and where you're basically going to be utilizing a character or hero, as well as potential followers and items. You're gonna be doing quests and side quests, and moving around the board. You'll have a set around action points, as well as a character board. They will give you stats ranging from strength and speed, intelligence and luck, as well as having your health and of course your inventory and your card slots. Moving around the board, passing turns, there's three different types of variants. You can play cooperative, you can play competitive, and you can play solo as well. That's the basic idea of it. The end of the game, whoever's completed the most quests and gained the most points is going to be the winner in the competitive variant, and the other ones are similar in that style. Let's go ahead and take a look down below and I'll show you all the components. So here we have the game Dark Venture and everything included and as you can see there's quite a bit so let's go ahead and go through it this is going to be the box for the game all this is prototype so it'll probably be changing in the future uh, you're going to have the quick setup guide as well as three separate booklets one is going to be the main rule booklet one is going to be the location guide and then the actions that correspond with those locations should you choose to activate them you're going to have a, a searching ability you're going to have all these different markers for all the different characters and NPCs you'll be utilizing throughout the game as well as any bonus stats you can attach to your character due to items and other effects. You're also going to get character boards here, and of course, you're gonna be able to choose heroes and their starting items, and every hero is gonna have their own unique token. Up here is the character location and items decks, and you'll be going ahead and shuffling these up and utilizing them throughout the game to maximize your heroes and companions' potentials. These are the attribute, and of course, on the backside, the health charts for any NPC characters that you can utilize. Most of them are gonna be utilizing two. You'll slip them over like that. That. Uh, and it's going to also include all of these cubes. These cubes are going to be used as reference for health and for all the basic various stats. Over here are going to be side quests, little quests you're going to undertake throughout the game, and they're going to be doing anything from searching to fighting different monsters. And then you're going to have the main quests or heroic quests. These you'll actually be able to do more than one potentially throughout the game, and you can gain quest points for completing them. Otherwise, if you don't end up doing them by the end of the game, you're not going to get anything. The final two things included in the game are, of course, these dice and these trackers here. The trackers uh, range from A, this one is the uh, sunrise to sunset, which will entitle a full entire game. And then this here is a tracker, which indicates hero quest points on one side, and then the solo mode and the cooperative variant for quest points as well to achieve victory. That's pretty much where we're getting in the game Dark Venture. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So to begin a game of Dark Venture, you're simply going to choose a character, take all of their stats as well as their items and equip it to them, provided it says that they are going to be holding those items, and then move their stats accordingly. Accordingly, you're going to take the map location, the crossroads, which is the first uh, piece of the map, and you're going to place all of your character tokens on that place, depending on how many players are playing, up to four players. After that, you're going to get a certain amount of cards from the item decks, from the character decks, and from the location decks, in which you'll be able to utilize throughout the game. Choose a person to start, place your token on the beginning of the sunrise step, and then everybody's going to have their character markers on a point tracker to total up their quest points throughout the game. Then you're going to simply take an action. You'll get three actions, and it's nice because these boards are actually going to dictate how many actions you have. It'll show you there's three actions down below here. It'll show you your hero. There's going to be your two equipment locations, and of course your inventory where you can put stuff in there. And your stats, which will range up and down up to 10, but you can gain bonuses as well. Uh, main actions are going to be to place down a location. You'll be able to move. You can search your location for items, or you can interact with a location. You can trade. There's all these great things you can do in the game. And it also is nice because it tells you on the back of all these rule books what you can do. Pick up an item, equip an item, search a location, engage in combat, play a character, play a location, move one location. And you'll be utilizing those little actions to do certain things. Mainly, you'll be utilizing them for the quests that you're going to get at the beginning of the game. Normally, you'll be going to be getting a couple of quests from the uh, lesser quests and one heroic quest. Some of them are going to range from defeating a bad villain to uh, rescuing a prince. Uh, there's other ones that are interesting that involve some crazy stuff going on. But overall, there's just a bunch of different things you can be doing to gain bo bonus points throughout the game. The game will end at a certain point, depending on the uh, type of game you're playing, and it's going to be based on this track here. Once it gets to this 12 marker for the uh, competitive variant is when the game is going to end. That's based on a round of play. And during that time, quests are going to be activated based on what the quests say. This one says, in two games, 
game rounds this is going to activate and you'll be getting these main quests randomly throughout the game as well as utilizing your choose your own adventure aspects on the location board so that's the basic idea of the game i'll take you down below and show you how a couple turns of play work and then we'll come up and i'll tell you what i think about it so here we have the game Dark Venture, and it's all set up for two players, and I've got the Hero Quest Point Tracker up, which is the competitive variant of the game. You have the locations, characters, and items deck over here, the main quests, the heroic quests, and the side quests, extra tokens and markers, which we will be used for these attribute cards for NPC characters, as well as choosing your character, which I went ahead and put here, put all the stats down, the action points, and then, of course, their equipped items that they start with in the game. These are all their stats that it shows for all the different characters. And then you're going to have your heroic quest, which you'll get one of, and you're going to be drawing a certain amount of them and discarding them down to one. I think it's draw three, pick one. You're getting three random side quests, and then you're going to get a hand of one location, one character, and uh, two items. Go ahead and set all the rest of these tokens aside, but take your character tokens, there'll be two of them for each character, and put one here in the crossroads, and one over here in the point quest tracker, which will be starting off over here, and that's how you're going to gain points throughout the game. Make sure you've got your location guide and your action guide set aside so you can utilize them as needed. And of course your dark venture over here is going to start at one, and it's going to go across here until the end of the game, and make sure that your dice are accessible really close. Okay, the rest of these characters you're not going to need uh, for picking, so you're going to go ahead and put them back in the characters and items deck. I'm just going to go ahead and set them aside though. You get the idea. To start a game, you choose a player and then they're going to begin by drawing any card they want from any of the decks here. And then they're going to have the option of drawing back up to three of these guys here. They can discard three of these to take a new main, but they can only do that once a game. Or they're simply going to be able to uh, draw the card and play, right? So when they play, they're going to have three actions as indicated on this little tracker here, and they're all little sliding trackers. And you're going to be able to do the different actions based on the back of this rule book here. It'll tell you what you can do, whether it's move to a location or play a location, and so on and so forth. Now, in your hand, of course, you're going to be able to utilize these cards and place them in your inventory if needed, or you're going to simply be able to utilize them uh, on, on the board here. So for instance, I'm going to be playing here as Il 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 Ilvas, the Warlock. And when you place down a location, you have to make sure that it connects to a location and that you are adjacent to it. I like to put it like this because then it has it looks it looks right. And you have to make sure that you have your character is if you're here, you can put one here. But if you are here, you can't put one over here, right? And that's how the rules for the engagement go. To place a location down is going to enact one of your actions to be able to then look at your location guide. Your opponent's going to go ahead and do that. They're going to go ahead and read this guide, de determining what the location is. Get an idea of it and then of course if I wanted to I could then move there for another action right so it'd be three to two and I have one action left and when I move to a location I would take the um location guide read it to see what happens and there's going to be an action and it'll tell you down here 23 in which case you would read it kind of like one of those choose your own adventure aspects in a game you'll be then going ahead and rolling to determine your stats and whatnot i don't want to explain any of these because they're all secretive and i don't want to spoil anything for you but just know that the loner's cavern is going to involve something that could either be beneficial for you and fight something or you'll have to make a choice whether you want to you know find a lockbox or whatever it might be there's a bunch of different things that can occur and all the while throughout this game, you're going to be trying to achieve these quests here. And down there, it'll tell you, like, in two game rounds, uh, you'll do this specific thing, right? So in two game rounds, after you get this card, maybe a guy will come out onto the field from the deck, and then you're going to need to rescue him or something like that, right? And if you can complete the quest, you're going to get uh, points for these quests. And it tells you on the top here what you're going to get, as well as randomly acquire these face-down uh, small passives, right? This one here says, <laughs> try roll to try to wear an egg armor, enter three different locations that have have hex actions, so on and so forth, right? So you get the idea. And of course, once you're out of actions, it's going to be down to the next player. They're going to draw their card and continue the game. Uh, there is quite a lot of locations in the game, and uh, you'll be utilizing them by placing them down on the board and, of course, moving and interacting with the book here and the actions as well. As you can see, this board can get rather large and provide quite a bit of things. And not only that, but there's also a bunch of items you can acquire. Some of them are two-handers, some of them are 
or one-handers. Basic RPG tactics is probably going to be what's needed. When everybody takes their turn, you're simply going to move this tracker here and continue. At certain points throughout the game, you're going to do different things that will be interactive. Um, and then once the game is over, the person who, has, person who has the most points or quest points is going to be the winner. And that's basically the idea of the game. You can also, of course, utilize cards from your hand, whether maybe you have a character card. So for instance, if I have this Vaporin Eve Soldier, I can play it, I would attach it next to the location I want to play it in, take the token, put it down, and then I would utilize these here, which would indicate its attributes and its characters. You're also going to be digging through the uh, items deck to find out whatever he's holding, and you can actually use this character for a round to do specific things in the game. Utilizing NPCs is useful. That can come in many different ways, though, whether it be from the cards or from you yourself playing it. But that's the basic idea of the game. Go around, try and complete quests, engage with other players, whether it be cooperative, solo, or against each other. All right, let's come up and talk about the game. So just before we get into the review of the game, let's talk about a couple caveats. One is that you'll be utilizing these die here for most of the different actions that are going to either involve attacking, you'll be utilizing your strength versus your opponent's strength, you'll be rolling two die each, and uh, there's other checks that can happen through the game, you'll be rolling your a d6, and then adding up your stat, whether it be intelligence or speed, or uh, luck, and then you can gain certain things throughout the game, of course. You'll be searching locations, when you do that you can gain items, and uh, you'll be utilizing these tokens that are to place down the location to signify that that location has already been searched. And like I said before, there's some tokens that you can utilize as well that will benefit you in term, ter uh, letting you know uh, what bonus the stats you get. But I think that's mainly what's going to cover the game. I think you got a good idea of how it functions. Now, what do I think about it? Well, uh, we'll, do, we'll do the negative first, and then we'll go with the positive, okay? So the negatives involved in the game is I don't think the rule books are fully fleshed out yet. Uh, when I went ahead and looked up the actions and reading them, they're kind of... But for once, for instance, searching, it doesn't necessarily say that you get anything for searching in the rules, um, but in certain other locations in the rulebook, it's, it, it signifies that you can gain items from doing that. So I've based it on, I think you just draw an item for a search. That may or may not be accurate, but that's as close as I could come up with it. Like I just said, it just needs a little few tweaks here and there. Uh, the combat could be in your favor and sometimes not in your favor, choosing to... Uh, it's just very dangerous, but you don't die when you get knocked out. You just have to try and roll to get back up. Uh, and that's probably going to happen quite a bit as you're going throughout the game if you want to do a lot of combat. You'll be doing a lot of checks. And when you're, what's really interesting in these books, right? The action and the location guide. For instance, I might have to go up a tower. And it's like, okay, use your strength to see if you can climb up the tower. Okay, now there's a lockbox inside the tower. Use your intelligence to see if you open it. Oh, you didn't open it. Now you fall down the, the tower and you have to roll a certain amount of die and take that much damage. Well, you can go ahead and do that again, as far as I'm aware, and your opponent can do that, and now they know the stat checks and all of that in order to uh, try and obtain that, in the, in the, that item in the tower. They know they need, they need to have a speed, and they need to know they have strength, where I as did not. So you can kind of game that a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about the positives now in the game. Well, first of all, the artwork is really, like, uncanny. It reminds me of old style D, D. it has that like retro feel to it and i, and I dig it uh, i like the old style i want to say like sega sega slash i don't know what it is it's just like uh sword in the stone kind of graphics and i dig that it's also got some like gr I don't know, grimy is a bad word but like it's like mucky you know and all the weird creatures and like that which is really cool it reminds me of like those old D, &D manuals but it's got very vivid artwork an 80s cartoon, I think, is kind of what it reminds me of. Uh, you'll be able to use the quests, which are fun, and they have some interactive aspects to them. And my favorite aspect about the game is these booklets here. These booklets remind me of the Arabian Nights game, the Choose Your Own Adventure aspects. This gives you a little bit of a D&D &D feel to it, because you can choose to take actions and locations. You can determine if something's bad or good, and then you get to choose what you want to do in them. One thing I can say is... I want more of this. This is like my favorite aspect of the game for sh by far, and uh, I want to see even more. I want to see different options you can choose and different uh, things that can go on. I mean, there's, there's, there's a bit in here, but I think it's like there's like 16 pages. Like double that. That's what I want to see. As I like the story building involved in these games, I'm the type of player though 
who doesn't like to role play himself or have a DM, I like to do it as though it's on there. I like to see all the stuff. So when it comes down to these cards here and it provides the locations and all that, this was really stellar as well. I enjoyed this aspect of the game and uh, how it all interacted with each other. You can choose to fight against your opponents or simply go try and collect your quests as best as possible. And it can be a race to the finish line, getting the correct quests and uh, hoping your opponents don't try and mess you over throughout the game which is fun as well. There's a solo variant, which I didn't get a uh, chance to play, but the co cooperative game works just as well. You basically just feel like you're you're living through a mine. It's, it's, a, it's a slice of life RPG game. You can sit down for an hour and a half, play a bit of an RPG, and then you can go ahead and move on with your day. You don't have to come back for another setting. And there is replayability, but only to the point where after you see a location again, you go, oh, there's Grob Grob's Tower, right? I know that if I do this thing in there, it's gonna, this is going to take effect. But sometimes they have multiple options, which I think is really solid in games like these having multiple options. Do you want to speak to him? Do you want to fight him? Or do you want to... You not even go up to them or whatever, right? Um, so overall, the, the game's cool. It's, it's interesting. I think this is going to be more for the D&D &D fan who wants a little piece of a D&D &D aspect to a game. We're on the level with this one. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily like broken or anything like that, obviously. I just want to see little tweaks to the rules to make sure that I'm um, aware of what needs to happen in certain instances. But overall, I think D&D &D players, RPGers, and people who want to get involved in that kind of stuff without actually just diving deep into it are going to enjoy the game Dark Venture. Definitely give it a check out uh, down below in the description if it sounds like a game they'd be interested in you to take a look at. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do really greatly appreciate it. As well as, don't forget to take a look at Dark Venture, which will be on Kickstarter in the description below. Like I said, uh, as far as positives and negatives go, overall, you can listen to what I have to say, but make your own minds up. It's very important that you do that. And if you're a D&D slash RPG, this might be the game for you if you want a little bit or if you're jumping into it. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter or listen more as well as our latest Halloween guide as to what games you should pick up for Halloween and our friends over at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Alright guys, that's all I got this time. As always, I look forward to adventuring in a deep dark dungeon with you next time. <laughs>